The heart of the product is a dry seal one-way valve and low pressure suction bulb combination. The valve ensures no backflow of fluids to the chest and the bulb applies low pressure suction. To effectively drain fluids from the chest, a low flow resistance is required as well as a low valve opening pressure. Our valve is called the Scheffler valve and it has an opening pressure of less than 1 cm water pressure. It has a large opening diameter to ensure that solid matter, i.e. blood clots, can drain through it easily. The bulb applies between minus 20 and minus 25 cm water pressure when depressed. It can be depressed as soon as the chest catheter is inserted, even in the operating room. A depressed bulb also indicates at a glance that suction is applied or that the lung has expanded. Fluids drain through the valve into the liquid holding chamber. The chamber can be orientated in any way and even held higher than the patient for short periods, making nursing care and patient mobility much easier. A writing surface is provided for fluid volume recording. Tilt the device sideways to measure small fluid volumes. A needleless sampling port is provided to take samples. An overpressure safety valve is included as well as a high negativity vent. Low pressure suction is attached to the air vent tubing and set to the required suction setting as prescribed by the clinician. The device includes an air leak detection chamber as well as an indication of the size of the air leak. Fluids are drained via the bottom safety rotational tap. Connecting the Sanapi chest drain. Open the pack and connect the connector to the chest catheter, ensuring a tight and secure fit. If required, use a wire connector to connect two chest catheters to one unit. To confirm chest catheter position after insertion. As soon as the catheter is positioned in the chest, depress the bulb. The bulb must initially re-expand confirming that air or fluid is draining from the pleural space. If it does not initially re-expand, there is an absence of air or fluids at the catheter tip and the catheter must be repositioned. Fill the air leak chamber with 30 mL saline. Look for bubbles or water level movement. You may place the device next to the patient on the bed for short periods. The fluids won't spill as long as the fluid in the reservoir is less than the maximum volume indicated on the device. When unattended, hang the product lower than the patient next to the bed. Depress the bulb. If it stays depressed, there is no air leak. If it re-expands, look for bubbling in the air leak chamber. If bubbling is visible on the right side or water level movement is visible on the left side, it confirms that air is evacuating from the chest. Small water level movements indicates a small air leak and larger water level movements indicates a larger air leak. When required, attach low pressure wall suction to the air vent tubing. The suggested suction pressure is between minus 20 and minus 40 centimeter water pressure or minus 2 to minus 4 kPa. The bulb will now stay depressed indicating that suction is applied. If the bulb stays depressed when removing low pressure wall suction, negative pressure is maintained and wall suction can be removed. Routinely drain fluids from the holder by attaching a Sanapi drainage bag to the bottom outlet tap. Open the tap to drain fluids and clamp the suction tubing temporarily to speed up drainage into the bag. Close the tap, close the bag slide clamp and detach the bag. Discard the bag immediately. When patients mobilize, a shoulder strap is used. You might want to shorten the chest catheter using aseptic technique to prevent kinks or loops in the tube. Before removing the chest catheter, you have to confirm two things. The drainage volume must be low and the bulb must stay depressed after depressing it. If it re-expands, it confirms that air is still present in the pleural space and the catheter cannot be removed. Confirm with chest x-ray before removal. 